Hello and welcome to this brief history of dams and hatcheries on the Klamath River. I know what you're thinking. What happened to your face? Never mind that now. My name is Michael Gaines and I work here at the CDFWY RECA office. Throughout this video, you'll see vocabulary words displayed across your screen like this. In a moment, you'll see them all displayed at once. I'd recommend taking a pause if you'd like to learn them briefly. Otherwise, let's get started. I am here at the historic lumber town of Klamathon. Or what's left of it, as the town was burned to the ground in 1902. However, for the purposes of our story, Clemathon represents the first site at which upstream salmon migration was halted entirely. When in 1889, the Klamath River Improvement and Lumber Company constructed a 10 to 12 foot tall dam to form a mill pond. Not until 1902, when the town burned to the ground and the F California Fish Commission ordered a fish ladder be built, was upstream access restored. By 1910, Klamathon would again mark the end of anadromy when the U.S. Bureau of Fisheries installed what's commonly referred to as the Klamathon Racks. By 1901, the Fish Commission of California had already begun egg collecting efforts not far from here, in Cottonwood Creek. They also constructed hatchery troughs, marking the first time hatchery raised fish were attempted on the Klamath River. But wait, there's more! You may be wondering, what is a hatchery? And why would the state of California be collecting salmon and steelhead eggs? Well, as we'll see shortly, a series of four dams would be built on the Klamath throughout the 1900s, permanently cutting off spawning habitat for these anadromous fish. As a mitigation effort for the already declining population levels, the state began capturing these fish and artificially reproducing them at the first successful Klamath hatchery on Fall Creek. Behind me are four of the remaining six ponds designed to rear the eggs taken from Klamathon and Battle Creek for reintroduction into the Klamath and Sacramento, among other rivers in the area. Completed in 1919 and operational until 1948, Fall Creek Fish Hatchery was built by the California Oregon Power Company after completion of Copco Dam number one cut off access to all upstream migrating fish. Now, wait just a minute. Which dams are we talking about? And where exactly are they located? Great questions. As I've mentioned already, Copco Dam number one was the first major dam on the Klamath River with construction finished by 1917. This dam was later expanded in 1925 to include Copco Dam number two. Together, these form Copco Lake. 33 years later and 20 miles upstream, another dam would be built on the Klamath, just north of the California-Oregon border. This is the J.C. Boyle Dam. Completed in 1964, it is the furthest dam upstream on the Klamath River slated to be removed in the coming years. It's got a fish ladder and fish screens and a spillway here that runs all the way through this next mountainside. Let's go check it out. Originally named the Big Bend Dam, this facility was rechristened in John C. Boyle's honor as vice president and longtime chief engineer of the California Oregon Power Company. As pioneer of these hydroelectric dam projects, John C. Boyle's legacy has certainly left its mark on the region's rivers. Which brings us to the Klamath's most recent dam known as Iron Gate. Completed in 1964, this structure is now the furthest point migrating salmon and steelhead can travel up the Klamath River at 196 miles from its confluence with the Pacific Ocean. 
Iron Gate is also the site of the Klamath's only operational hatchery, capable of producing millions of salmon and steelhead juveniles annually. All four of these dams' sole purpose is for the production of hydroelectricity, and yet they are each slated to be removed due to their antiquated design and non-compliance with newly enacted California legislation requiring fish passage infrastructure. With the planned demolition of these four dams and Iron Gate Hatchery, Fall Creek Hatchery is set to become operational once again after, of course, substantial renovations.